um, I want to talk about the classification of aerodynamic tire char characteristics today. Um, and uh, my, the agenda for my talk will be after a short introduction to uh, tire aerodynamics. I will give you an overview um, of the project that we are currently uh, doing. I will explain the experimental and numerical setup we used and then in the main part show you the results uh, we could achieve so far. Um, as you probably all know, um, the tires of a passenger car can influence the um, drag of the vehicle in quite uh, some way when you measure it in the wind tunnel. Even if you use the same spokes, uh, same rims, and the same tire size, the drag value can um, change quite, um, quite much. So for example, if you compare a, an average production tire with a aerodynamically good production tire, difference usually is in the magnitude of around five drag counts. And if you um, take this good production tire and um, optimize it concerning its aerodynamic um, properties, you can even increase this delta in drag for the whole vehicle um, in the magnitude of another five drag counts. Um, and this without any um, negative change on the other tire characteristics. So um, the shape of the tire can have quite some influence on the drag of the vehicle. Um, what we have also seen is that this influence on drag is mostly independent from the shape of the vehicle. So we tested the good production tire and the optimized tire on uh, vehicles from different classes and as you can see, um, the aerodynamically optimized tire will reduce drag for every vehicle we tested and also reduces lift for, for every vehicle. If we go more into detail, um, we can see that this influence is mainly occurring from the front wheels of the vehicle. We therefore um, tested uh, a vehicle with um, two different sets of tires. We started with tire A on both axles as a reference then switch the tires on the rear axle to a different set of tires, and you can see there's no influence in drag between these two uh, configurations. If we now switch the tires from front to rear and rear to front, you can see there's quite some uh, increase in drag due to this configuration change, and um, this uh, stays the same even if we use tire B on both axles of the tire. So if we want to uh, optimize uh, the aerodynamic properties of a tire, we can focus on one vehicle and we can focus on the front axle of the vehicle. And with this, with this in mind, uh, we asked ourselves the question, is it possible um, to characterize the aerodynamic properties of a tire independent of the vehicle shape? Um, and we started a project uh, funded by the German Ministry of Finance and Economics Baden-Württemberg, and um, the goal is to develop a standardized method for the classification of aerodynamic char tire characteristics. Um, as you probably all know, um, there's this uh, tire label, um, which is required for every tire sold in the EU, um, where fuel efficiency, wet grip, and external rolling um, noise is characterized for each tire. And according to this characterization, um, we are trying to get a uh, comparable classification for the aerodynamic properties of the tire. This means we have to determine a suitable test environment, if possible independent from the vehicle, so in that we can use, um, we don't have to use the full-scale wind tunnel in, in best case, and we also have to come up with a grading for different tire sizes, because if we compare a 14-inch tire, which is very narrow, for example, to a 20-inch tire, of course, the drag of the 20-inch tire is much higher than for the smaller one. So there has to be a, a grading which is more or less independent from the tire size. Um, the experimental and numerical setup is uh, shown on this slide. Um, for the measurements, we used a full-scale wind tunnel of IVK FKFS. Um, we used two different vehicles for the full vehicle measurements, one full, one estate uh, from the D segment and one um, compact MPV. 
and we um, created a quite uh, simple setup um, to measure um, an isolated wheel in the wind tunnel, which you can see here in this picture. So we have one tire on the wheel rotation unit and uh, we have the mount also on the balance so um, drag for the whole um, setup is, is measured. Um, but as we compare only the deltas between different, different tires, the absolute drag for this setup is um, not important for us. For the frontal area for this setup, we used half of the um, area of the vehicle because we have only one tire and the vehicle has two front tires, so we can directly compare the deltas in drag between this very simplified setup and the full vehicle measurements. On the numerical side, we uh, used extra power flow with a setup consisting of around uh, 50 million voxels with a finest mesh size of 1.25 millimeters. And we used sliding mesh for the rim rotation and the uh, rotating boundary condition for the tire rotation. As you can see, the setup is quite the same as in the full scale wind tunnel. So um, we have the same uh, setup and can directly compare measurement and uh, numerical simulation. We looked at five different tires. On the left side, you can see our reference tire, which is the good production tire seen earlier in the first slides. Um, then we used the second summer tire, one tire with a rim shield, one winter tire, and the already seen um, aerodynamically improved tire. All have been in the same tire size, 205-55-R16, and all were mounted on the same uh, rim with uh, six holes. If we compare the results from the full vehicle measurements um, and the isolated wheel setup, we can see um, here the delta between each tire and the reference tire. And um, as you can see, for the optimized tire and for the tire with the rim shield, um, there's quite, good, quite a good um, agreement for the results, but as you can see on the other tires, the trends are totally different. And I think um, um, that's quite clear if you look at the flow around the uh, tire um, on the vehicle. The tire is mostly shielded from the direct flow um, due to the wheelhouse. And what you can see in, in this picture the flow is also directed outwards and is not approaching the tire um, in a straight way. So if we look at the static pressure distribution in front of the tire, you can see on the vehicle, um, we have an area of high static pressure only here in this lower part of the tire due to, to the shielding of the wheelhouse. And on the isolated wheel, we have a um, quite high uh, area of static pressure because it's directly uh, approached by the flow. So it's no wonder that um, the results um, we've seen in the previous slide are not the same. But um, for this, we wanted to start with the most simplified um, way to, to measure the drag of the tire and um, continue from there on to get uh, more and more into detail. So. Uh, next approach was to design a simplified wheelhouse, um, which consisted of a detailed um, inner shape that's comparable to the vehicle and a quite simplified outer shape, which you can see in this picture. This wheelhouse was mounted uh, on a sting and was not connected to the balance, so um, still only the tire and the mount was um, measured and we were able to rotate this um, whole setup to, um, to do different flow angles um, for this setup. If we look at the results, um, you can see the same um, picture as before. Um, and in addition, the green bars for the single wheel with a separated wheelhouse. And we can see for all of the tires now, the trends uh, match quite good. Um, but still we have some um, disagreement in absolute value. If we look at the flow field um, around the tire, 
we can see two main um, differences. Uh, in the upper pictures, you can see uh, there's a, a flow separation here on this front end of the wheelhouse due to its sharp edge, which uh, will lead to a different um, flow situation around the tire. And on the lower picture, you can see um, the approach angle of the flow is um, still different between the um, vehicle and this simplified um, setup. This um, difference in flow angle will um, alter the separation um, of the flow on this uh, front corner of the tire and therefore will uh, give you a difference in, uh, in aerodynamic drag for different, uh, for different tires. Um, so next step was um, to improve our simplified um, wheelhouse geometry. We used a realistic outer shape of a, a vehicle, which you can see in this, these pictures, um, and combined it with our simplified wheelhouse. So the goal was to get a comparable um, flow situation on the outside of the tire, but still um, be as simple as possible in, um, on the areas that are not of interest for, for the tire. Um, we used sharp edges on the rear end of the wheelhouse, so we have a defined um, flow separation here. Um, and as you can see, the, the detailed geometry of the, of the vehicle is still kept inside the, wheel, the wheelhouse. Um, if we look at the flow field um, with these, this improved wheelhouse geometry, you can see there's quite a good agreement now between the full vehicle and the um, simulation with this um, simplified wheelhouse, both in the, in the area inside the wheelhouse as well as uh, in the area where the tire is in the direct uh, approaching flow. Um, also, the deltas between the different tires um, showed quite a good agreement um, for each tire we, that we investigated. Um, so, to conclude my presentation with this improved wheelhouse, we think we have a quite good um, solution to uh, investigate the aerodynamic characteristics of different tires independently of the vehicle shape. Um, and uh, next steps in the, in the project will be uh, the construction of the wheelhouse so that we can validate this approach also in the wind tunnel and uh, that we uh, also can validate it for different um, rim sizes, rim styles and uh, tire sizes. And then finally, um, we have to define different criteria to specify and to compare the aerodynamic characteristics of different tires. So, thank you very much.